Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So in previous videos, I've talked about how we're trying to increase food production here on the homestead. And one of my latest things I've tried, I'm trying to do this year is going to be growing spelt. And so there's a quarter acre that I plowed up, planted spelt, and then about 48 hours later, it rained. We got about an inch of rain on this and we haven't had any rain for the last few days. We had a couple hard freezes that were not expected this time of year uh so i'm wondering if this is still going to come up or not it's supposed to rain in a few days so hopefully we'll know within a few weeks if actually spelt pops up out of here and we have some spring grain that we can harvest to help with our food production here on the homestead but i planted about 25 pounds of spelt for this quarter acre which i'm assuming is supposed to be correct for that size of ground anyway let me know what you think in the comments below, but today I want to talk to you about rice. What do you guys want? What could you possibly want besides lots of corn and sweet pea? Look at these guys. They're like never-ending bottomless pits. You have to keep feeding them and feeding them and feeding them. Oh, goodness. So right back here behind these trees, we have a pond that is basically filled in. Uh, there's always water in it. We have a, a seepage well or a seepage spring that's rear, right near here, and that always keeps this always full of water. Uh, but it's basically filled in. There's always about that much water around the sides. Maybe a little bit steeper, you know, in the middle. But I thought about maybe filling it in. But it'd be a great place because it's always wet to grow rice. Let's take a look. So this is the pond that's kind of filled in. And so what I'm thinking about doing is coming back here this winter after some more of the vegetation dies down and uh, mowing it down and cutting it as best as I can and trying to clear out some spaces where I can grow the rice. If you have any suggestions on how to do that below, put a comment. Um, but you can see a bunch of the algae growing there. It's just standing water, real shallow standing water. You got, uh, you know, the cattails coming up, you know, so it's just maybe it's always wet. So I'm thinking it's a good place to grow rice. And so I mentioned this in a video the other day. And when I mentioned it in the video, some of you guys put a comment below, Zach, how are you gonna de-haul that rice? Well, we came up with an option. Tim came up with a little contraption and I wanna show you that today. Now, if you look on YouTube, you will find all kinds of videos of people putting rice in like these containers and then getting a big stick and then like pounding them down pounding the rice down until the hulls break off of the rice and then they blow off the chaff and what you're left with is a lot of broken rice. Uh, meanwhile, the hullers, the dehullers that they sell out there, the, the machines are very expensive and uh, they keep the, the rice intact. And so um, there was an engineer online and I, I watched a couple of videos on how other people were doing this and I thought, you know, we can probably come up with a, a contraption that would basically keep the rice intact and then take it off of the hull. And this is what Tim came up with. So you have this box right here, it's got sides on it, okay? And then you have this contraption here with a handle, okay? That this, this goes in here and then basically you put the rice down inside here and then turn it to grind it and it does not break the rice and it takes the hulls off. So let's just take a handful of rice like that Put it in there. Now this has got the hull on it. This is seed rice, brown seed rice. Uh, the variety of this rice is Titan medium grain. Okay, so I'm going to take this, drop it on there, and then I'm just going to grind it. Now, I'm probably going to have to do this a few times because it keeps coming out. So I'm going to keep bunching it up in the middle a few times like that. And I'm just going to grind it again. And I'm going to do that a few times. And then I'm going to take it outside and blow off the chaff. Now after winnowing this down, this is what we're left with. And yes, there are a few stragglers that um, you can see in there, but for the most part, this is just rice left. Um, most of it's not broken, like the way you do it with the other methods that you see online, people doing this in like India or 
in Thailand or Vietnam, but this is mostly intact rice. And just took a few minutes, or really a few seconds, to dehull most of it. And with a little bit of time and uh, some more going through this device here, it will probably get the rest of it off. And um, I, and there's probably always going to be a few stragglers that are kind of you know hard to get off of that, but um, but for the most part, I think that'll work. So I'm just thinking maybe some improvements on this could be like so you can make some slots in here. Um, it seems like a lot of it wants to come out as you're turning it, uh, wants to come out the sides here. And uh, so you gotta have to like shake it and, and do it again and shake it and do it again to get them all. But uh, for the most part, that's a pretty good, pretty good method of dehulling rice. So maybe you can come up with something like it similar. I'm probably sure if you have a workshop and some woodworking uh, tools and uh, a little bit of know-how and ingenuity, you could probably come up with something that worked just as well if you wanted to grow rice at home, rather than spending the money on one of those big expensive machines uh, that probably would just be too big for you. They're only made for commercial purposes. So anyway, it's just an option. There you go. Give me a like if you like the video. I really appreciate it. Folks, if you want to learn more stuff about homesteading, be sure to subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate that as well. All right, see you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait.